offensive team. Now, in order for them to have a chance in this ball game, they're going to have to control those mistakes. Mel Gray, number 30, and Kevin Mack, number 27 out of Clemson, are the deep people for Los Angeles to accept a kickoff from Dave Trout. Of course, uh, David got himself in the record book last week with 19 points in the ball game against Birmingham. And uh, the five field goals tied a USFL record. So David, ready to hammer it. And Kevin Mack now making uh, an appearance for the Los Angeles Express. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him get to play some because so far Los Angeles has not shown a power back that can get to the real tough yardage. Here's a high hanging kick. It'll be Mel Gray, a rookie out of Purdue. And Gray is down at the 16. Never really got a chance to turn up field as Mike Johnson from Virginia Tech came in a hurry. So now let's look at the Los Angeles Express as Steve Young comes out at 6'2", 200 pounds, and the much heralded rookie out of BYU. I guess you know just about everything you need to know about him. And his salary, of course, has become the big fascination. In the backfield behind it, will be H-back will be David Hersey, 6'2", 225. He's a rookie out of Tulsa. Kevin Nelson out of UCLA, and Kevin at 5'11", 190. And uh, Jojo Townsell, the wide man, the big guys up front are all young, but they're big and they're just developing. And here's the first play of the ball game for Kevin Nelson. And Nelson shoots through over the right side and gets up across the 20 to the 23. Philadelphia opens up with this defensive alignment. The three thick guys up front who had a big game last week against Birmingham, Fuller, Kugler, and Fielder. Bunning, Howard, Mills, and Cooper, the linebackers. The secondary, they didn't work hard last week, I didn't think. Sutton, Lane, Gibson, and Lush because Birmingham didn't put any pressure on them. Second play of the ball game. Again, the run with Nelson carrying. And Kevin is across the 25, near the 26, and close to a first down. We're having a little audio trouble here, so if you just get everything cranked up and get it started, we'll get things working out. I'm having a little trouble telling whether I'm working or not. Ball is out to the 27, where it is a first down for the Los Angeles Express. By the way, it's obvious that they're trying to establish a running game before Steve Young drops back to pass. On first down with Gray in the backfield, he swings it out to Gray. He's got two people in front of him. Number 57, Mike Ruth of the center coming off the tackle, and the big Texan was out there in a hurry to throw a block for him, and he moved the football out near the 33 where Sam Mills brings him down. Well, you see Mel Gray step out to the outside setting up this screen, and personally, I, I, I said it early in our opening, Keith, I don't believe screens work when you just line up and throw them right away in the ball game, especially against a team like the defense of the Philadelphia Stars, which will move across the field very well. You have to stretch them long. This is Nelson. Looking for some daylight, and uh, Kevin is close to a first down as he's near the well, the 37-yard line. Robert Clemmer comes over and marks him right about the 37. He's going to be close. They'll bring the change in to measure. The crowd is not what Philadelphia has been drawing. Of course, this is that rather special day in the springtime, Mother's Day. And though I see some people still coming in, it's an absolutely gorgeous day in the Philadelphia area. The change coming in for the measurement. See about a few inches short, no? Like an inch, though. It lacks an inch. You heard Burl Sorgan is the referee. He is out of Fairfax, California. John Bradley, the umpire. Jack Petkus, the head linesman. Dave Hedeman, the line judge. Chet DeStefano, the back judge. Grover Clemmer, the side judge. And Wesley Ward is the field judge. Jim Mora standing there in the bright sun with his team. And he has, as I said at the very beginning, been working very hard this week, selling his team, worried about a letdown after the big win over Birmingham. It is third down, Los Angeles on the year, about 39% in third down conversions. Young takes the snap, punches ahead, and he will have the first down. Not afraid to call his number. No, he's not. In a situation like that, he's only trying to get an inch. He calls his number, he stays in close to his own offensive line. It's just one less handoff you have to make. And Steve Young at 6'2", 200 pounds is you know, the kind of guy that will fight for a, a tough inch or even a tough yard if necessary. 
Now going in is David Hersey, number 81. He had come off for that one play. Jojo Townsell goes back in. Townsell is the leading receiver at 5'9", 180 out of UCLA. Jojo is the, may not be the fastest man, but he is the fastest among the receivers. He is also the leading receiver on this team. He, Steve likes to go to him a lot, but that presents a problem if they get too much into that tendency. This is Nelson trying to sweep it. And a good play by number 56, George Cooper, an outside linebacker out of Michigan State. Cooper is 6'2", 220, but his, like all of the Philadelphia linebackers, they have tremendous mobility. If you're going to go wide with them and play them east and west, you're just simply not going to handle it. Well, what they have, Keith, Keith, is lateral speed. They move well along the line of scrimmage, playing off blockers, getting to the outside to make the tackle. We saw last week in the game against Birmingham, all four linebackers look like dancers, just sliding down that line, making tackles. Second down and seven, Young back to throw it, gets it over the middle, and the pass is complete, caught by Darren Long at tight end, a rookie out of Cal State Long Beach. He makes the catch under pressure and puts it on the Philadelphia side of the field for a first down. Now, as you look at this, it's worth pointing out, I think, Lynn, that Darren Long is, is new at that position. He is new at that position, but even more important than this one play, I thought there was a little pass interference on the play, but the officials didn't call it. He maintained his concentration, picked up the ball, and you see the way he's fighting for the yard. They're going to need that kind of effort all day long against a tough defensive team. The one thing you can't do is let Philadelphia get a couple of touchdowns in front because the defense will just simply not give you anything. You have to earn everything you get against them. The gain is from near the 48 down to about the 45. Kevin Nelson carrying Cooper and Mills the tackle. Pointing out a little bit of possible strategy here in the game, Keith, we talked about Jojo Townsell being the number one receiver. He won't be alone much of this ball game. I think the secondary will stay very close to him, trying to take away that main weapon. And also, they will be testing out this young offensive line just to see how good they are, where they're strongest. Fred Scott on a fly. Young under pressure. Runs away from the pressure. Mills is after him. Gets the pass away. Incomplete. The pass intended for Tony Bodie swinging out of the backfield. There were two stars chasing Young, and they ran him all the way into the sideline. Mike Lush was one of those who had blitzed on it coming out of his free safety spot. Well, before I could get to the part about the Philadelphia team having a full package of blitzes, Steve, Mike Lush comes in on a safety blitz. Steve Young was doing a good job driving this team down the field, just nickeling his, and diming his way down. So Vince Tobin calls the blitz, throws Steve Young off his game, put a little bit more pressure on him. Now for Moore, Scott, and Townsell, wide receivers. Young with time to throw. Goes down the middle with it and gets the pass into the hands of David Hersey, his H-back. And he's got a first down at the Philadelphia 33, and that time he drilled the ball. He certainly did. And you and I, Keith, you know, we talked about the game before it started, and in discussing this offensive line, we, we both agreed that if they gave Steve Young enough time to throw the football, this team had a very good chance of putting points on the board, possibly in a position to upset this team. So far in this drive, the offensive line has handled the rush of Kugler, Fielder, and Fuller. Ball goes to Kevin Nelson. Over the right side. Nelson inside the 30. Close to the 27. So that's a pickup of five, close to six yards by Nelson. If you can get five yards per carry on the ground, you're going to beat somebody. <laughs> Nelson comes off. Percy goes back in. Mel Gray will be the lone remaining back. John Hadle, the coach of the Los Angeles Express, his first adventure as a head coach. And it's uh, been some rough seas. And Hersey, as the line comes up to set, Hersey jumps and makes contact with George Cooper, and that's five against Los Angeles, and I have no reason why in the world he did that. Well, offense. It wasn't so much a jump, he took off as if you were running a race in a track meet. And I think the reason, Keith, and of course I'm not down there to know for sure, is that Steve Young probably had the snap count. As soon as he walked up to the line, he was going to call the snap count. And he walked up, Hershey just anticipated and took off. And it cost him five. There's also the possibility of somebody on the defensive team calling signals. <laughs> Second down and ten. Ball at the 33 of Philadelphia. Oh, now the pressure of the ball game, and the Stars are blitzing. And they've got him. First man through was Glenn Howard. Keith, 
Steve Young came up, looked over the defense, and you could see that he was checking off. Watch him as he takes the ball back. He had looked over the line of scrimmage, looked over the defensive line, looked down to his receiver and was signaling to him, alerting him. He was calling, a, calling an audible, probably picked up that blitz, but there was nothing he could do about it. 67, Pete Cooler, 51, Glenn Howard. Glenn Howard, the linebacker, in on the sack. Ball comes back to the 41 of Philadelphia, a loss of eight. They give that ball to number 30, Mel Gray, who's a speedster out of Purdue. And Gray tries to sweep it over the left side, and he is well short of the first down as Antonio Gibson, the strong safety, runs him down and makes the tackle. He was running behind number 62, Durrett, and Jones trying to get some blocking, trying to stay behind his blocking to the outside, but not enough for a first down. Tony Zendejas comes in, the place kicker for Los Angeles for a 47-yard field goal try. Three out of five beyond the 40 and uh, up to the 49-yard line. So between 40 and 50, Tony is three out of five. Got enough leg on it, but it is wide right. Wide right. Ball did not hook back in for him, and so the Los Angeles Express holding the football for quite a long time, got as far as the 33, and then a sack and a penalty and a missed field goal. Los Angeles held the football seven minutes and 13 seconds and came away with no points. Now, there's an important the point, I think, right there, where Philadelphia has been dynamite over the last four games in the first half, outscoring the opposition 99-3. to three. So the Stars go to work. at the 33. Ball moving from the 30 up for three yards. Chief Chuck Pichina is down on the ground holding his left arm. He took a pretty good hit as he released that ball on the screen. He was trying very hard to set this up, let the defensive secondary move back again on first down throwing the screen. It's kind of a touchy play and he's just slammed down to the turf by number 79, Charles Usury. down and seven Philadelphia you've seen it stays in stung but hanging in that's Holton the tight end in motion you've seen it gives the football to Kelvin Bryant number 75 George Achika nails him or just short of the line of scrimmage in fact rolls him back inside the 30 you've seen it almost 65% uh, in his passing as you see 64-4 for 2,312 yards Joined to the backfield by David Riley, Kelvin Bryant, Willie Collier, Scott Spitzky, uh, Scott Spitzky of the wide people, and it's Oates, Gilbert, Oates, Comiskey, Eatman, and Folsom, the big guys up front. Donovan comes in now on third down and ten after uh, Bryant was stopped behind the line of scrimmage, and Cusina on a deep drop gets some pressure, gets his pass away, he's got Spitzky wide open, and he's got a first down at the Los Angeles 47-yard line and a penalty flag on the field. Scott Pitsky did a did a real good job of scrambling once Chuck Fusina was on the run. Holding number 54, defense, penalty decline, first down. Howard Carson, middle linebacker for Los Angeles, caught holding. And so Philadelphia obviously will take the play since it was good all the way to the Los Angeles 47. And the Stars now are sitting on the L.A. side of the field. That is a typical Fusina play. Typical Fusina play. The front four of the L.A. Express did a good job of putting pressure on them, but he got away, found the receiver. An old classmate from Penn State downfield to pick up the big third down play. Your Penn State uh, alums are very obvious in the Philadelphia lineup, but the USC alums are very obvious on the Los Angeles side of the field as well. We've got a timeout called, and... Uh, while they talk, let's watch this. Georgia Chica and Charles Usry, Eddie Weaver, that's Washington, two USC's and a Georgia up front. Danny Rich, Howard Carson, Kevin Turner, the linebackers. Henderson, Justin, Drain, and Mitchell, the secondary. It's first down Philadelphia at the Los Angeles 47, and Fitzky goes in motion. That's Kelvin Bryant. And they got him again. 
Making the play is Fletcher Jenkins out of Washington with help from strong safety Dwight Drain. Oh, number 33, Dwight Drain came up to, uh, to force his play as we take a look at the right side of the offensive line. Charging out, trying to open up a hole. You see it, Eatman hits him here, turns him inside, and Kelvin just didn't see which way his blocking was going. Took, went inside with the ball instead of bouncing to the outside where Irv Eaton was trying to open up the hole for him. Drain made the tackle, was in on it almost just by mistake. Well, it's second down and 12 after the loss of two yards for Bryant. Bryant's lost six yards now and two carries. Fusina rolls it out, play action, throws it downfield. Good to Steve Folsom tied in. Folsom's got a first down as he goes to the Los Angeles 32. Well, obviously, they, this, the Philadelphia Stars feel they can throw against this team early. They're running their play action passes off the success or the reputation of a running game, finding their tight end Folsom open right down the center. Uh, the safeties for this LA Express team have a great deal of run responsibility, Keith. Uh, they've been known to come up and play the run very hard, but when they see that run, they can be come up for the play action fake. The tight end can get down in the middle of the field behind him very quickly. Give it to the big guy, Riley, and David, who had a shoulder bruise in last week's win over at Birmingham, bangs into the middle and maybe has a yard as he moves near the 31. I was trying to watch. I see Tyrone Justin looks like he's going to come up and try to play Willie Collier Man. And uh, that's quite a challenge. That would be quite a challenge. Tyrone Justin has, has good athletic ability, but he's been picked on, victimized quite a bit by receivers throughout this season. Collier's out of there right now as Fusina drops the throw, sets up a screen for Kelvin Bryant, and Bryant's on his way. Steps out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. Kelvin Bryant did a great job that time of reading his blocking. Watch it as the screen sets up. The block he gets on the outside. I believe that was by number 70. Oates right there just knocks out the corner. He makes a great move right there on Wyman Henderson. Gets to the sideline and jumps out of bounds because he had no place to go. So an excellent job of reading and running by Kelvin Bryant. And it's first down and goal to go. Philadelphia, the ball is sitting just inside the nine. So the Stars continuing to move the football so well in the first half of play. This is their first offensive possession. And you've got a timeout call, this time by Philadelphia. As Fusina looked over the personnel he had on the field, looked at the defense he was facing, didn't like either call time. He doesn't have what he wants. Well, he doesn't want, want to make a mistake inside the 10-yard line. You're in scoring territory. He has a first down. You want to come over with a touchdown, so that's a, that's very important. Smart move on this part. Herbert Harris goes in motion. 6'2", 200-pounder, and penalty flag. Dot the turf. He's got seven seconds remaining on the clock, so somebody must have moved. Interference with the offensive center, number 75, defense. Well, Los Angeles continuing to make mistakes. They had a five-yard penalty called on them when they had the ball going the other way and looking strong doing it. Now they've made a, a really an unnecessary move here as uh, Achika made contact with the center. He said unnecessary interference with the center. Uh, I wonder what he means by that. Was he touching the football or? Well, he was pretty close. Yeah. It was like he was uh, almost, almost touching the man. Jeff Rodenberger comes in now, and he lines up on the left side. And when he's in there, that very often means run, but he won't this time. It's Fusina throwing in zone. Touchdown. Ken Dunnick tied in. In 1983, saw Chuck Fusina come to the Philadelphia Stars from a backup role with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, gaining confidence as, as the season progressed relying a great deal on the running game of 1983 but 1984 it's been the leadership and the confidence of chuck Fusina throwing the football that was the first touchdown also by ken dunnick this year it's a play a formation at least that normally means sweep and that time they just shipped him over the left side Fusina rolled right man was wide open dave crowd in for the extra point and it's no good oh david it's unlike you 
Missed that one clean. Well, David Trout is usually very consistent. We'll see how it affects him on this open, this kickoff after the touchdown when we return. Stand of the year, the fourth extra point miss of the season by Dave Trout. Six nothing Philadelphia Stars. 4.27 to play first quarter. Kevin Mack, 27. And Mel Gray, 30, the deep people. And Trout's kick is high and goes to Gray from the three. Last time he returned at 13 yards. Goes to the sideline this time and gets up across the 20 near the 25. Bill Hardy of Virginia Tech, the man that brought him down. Determined to stop the running game, and they did, but they paid for it by leaving Fusina some time and room. On first down from the 25, Young's pass is whipped upfield. The pass is caught by Darren Long, the tight end, his second reception of the day. And it's good for a first down to the 39. Picked up 14 yards. Well, Steve Young picked up right where he left off when he had control of this offensive team. Throwing the football, moving him down the field. And Keith, he is moving the ball straight down the field, getting it over number 54, the middle linebacker, Sam Mills, to his tight end, Darrell Long. I think we're going to have to see Philadelphia blitz a little bit more because it certainly hasn't thrown him off his game just by rushing four people. Bodie goes in motion. Ball pitched out to Mel Gray. Gray with good foot speed, but not that big at 175 pounds. Runs into Sam Mills after he picked up about three, maybe I'm going to give him three yards on the carry. The tight end situation for the Express. Ricky Ellis hurt, Mike Sherrod hurt, and of course Gordon Hudson uh, hasn't played at all. Mel Gray is a rookie out of Purdue, and he starts going to the outside. We talked about the linebackers, how well they slide. 54, Sam Mills, who is an inside linebacker, made that tackle after a four-yard game gain all the way on the sideline. Ball is sitting up on the 43. to the sidelines and throws it out of bounds. He had Jojo Townsell. That's the first time today he's tried to get it to Jojo. He holds the USFL record with 249 yards receiving in a game. Got it against Memphis. <laughs> Cooper had those crosshairs, I thought, planted right on the left shoulder of Steve Young as he came in from his outside linebacker position, Keith. And as Steve st took a little step forward, Cooper realigned his charge, and then Steve backed up, headed towards the sideline. Malcolm Moore is in. He's 6'5", 210. Darren Long is out. They're double blind to the bottom of the picture. Out of the shotgun on third down and six. Catch is made by Malcolm Moore, but he did not get the first down. He did not get the first down. The officials marked it just short of it. He caught the pass. And I didn't see who that was that came up to make the tackle, but he came up from behind. Did not let Malcolm get planted. Well, Malcolm should have gone past the yard well, marker. Well, he should have gone past around. the yard marker. Well, that, I think, is his inexperience at this present time. Jeff Partridge in, averaging just over 38 yards. Kicks it high, wants to kill it as deep as possible. It's a knuckleball that kicks out of bounds uh, just inside the 25. They'll mark him out at the 24. So he only got 26 yards on that punt. Philadelphia will go to work at the 24 first down. ABC's Wide World of Sports, 4 to 5 Eastern for Part 1 and from 6 to 6.30 for Part 2 next week. That's a special time. And we'll have the Black Eyed Susan and Preakness Stakes pre and post uh, race reports. And we've got a very special event that will be announced either Monday or Tuesday of this coming week that I'm sure you'll enjoy seeing. ABC's Wide World of Sports, next Saturday. All right, Chuck Fusina now from his 24. Last time he had the ball, he went right on down the field, 70 yards. They give it to Kelvin Bryant again, and again, the Los Angeles defense is stacked against the run. Bryant maybe has two. Danny Rich, number 53, and number 75, Georgia Chica, were the men on the stop. This front line of, uh, the front defensive line is doing a great job against the run and putting pressure on Fusina. He gives off to Bryant, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage. There's not a whole lot of room for him to go as he has to struggle to get those two yards. Second down and eight. Ball just outside the 26. Los Angeles right now showing a 
five-man front with an outside linebacker stepping up. Give it a try. Black cannot get loose. Again, David Howard filling the hole from his linebacking position. He is a rookie out of Cal State Long Beach. He's been gimpy, and he is back now feeling healthy, and he's a very, very active linebacker for the Express. Michigan and New Orleans now have gone into the second quarter of play in their game at the Superdome with no score. I wouldn't have expected that. No, it's a big game for both those two teams, and they're, <laughs> they're struggling. Houston, after losing successive overtime games, came back last night to win big, 47 to 26. You've seen a five out of five in his passing for 69 yards, gonna put it up again. And he goes to the sideline to Fitzky, and Fitzky pulls it in. And he's got a first down for the Stars. Just beyond the 38-yard line, Wyman Henderson trying to cover him. And Fitzky is a tough guy to handle when he gets you out there one-on-one. -on -one. Fitzky did a great job. He had number 86, Willie Collier, running a hook and go down the middle. Now, earlier I talked about the safeties, how they come up for a run, how you can get by them. He gets by number 34, Mitchell, down the middle, but Fushina opts to go to Fitzky on the sideline for the safer pass. I have a feeling we're going to see Fushina try and go deep down the middle a lot later on in this ballgame. I wouldn't be surprised. Let's try Bryant again, and this time he finds a little room. And he goes from the outside the 38 up to the 45, so he's got the better part of seven, seven and a half yards. Well, that was certainly the best hole Kelvin Bryant has seen this afternoon, being handed the ball in his backfield as he goes up right through the middle of his line, falling behind number 63, a pulling guard there for the team, George Gilbert, and then finally being dragged down by number 53, Danny Rich. Second down, call it three for Philadelphia from the 45. You see, him. gets it away, tip, and incomplete Howard Carson, number 54, the middle linebacker, had dropped into the short zone and stuck his hand up and tipped it away. Keith, I'll tell you, it's, it's scary for an offensive team, a player, to see a pass like that thrown and get tipped by a linebacker only five yards or so downfield and not really knock it down but cause the ball to float in the air. There were three diff defensive backs. If they were not concent concentrating so much on the receiver, they might have seen that ball and picked it off. Alan Harvin now steps into the ball game for the first time today at a setback position replacing Bryant. Third down and a long three. Close to four. As Fusina drops, throws it quickly down the middle and the pass is incomplete and finally we get a penalty flag. It was a late flag. Troy West defending against Steve Folsom. Troy West, a rookie out of the University of Southern California. Pass interference against West. I just got called for a little pushing there. What that will do is give them the first down that they were trying to get. Maintains the drive. 15-yard penalty moves the football down to the Los Angeles 40-yard line. Tyrone Justin, that Pass was number interference. Number 47, defense, first down. We'll take a look at number 47 at the top of the screen. You see right there he makes contact, a little grabbing there. And now as Folsom starts to go along on the crossing route, he just gets right behind him, trips him up with his legs, pushes him down. You've seen it will throw on first down from the 40. There he goes deep for Collier. He's got it. Didn't have enough real estate to keep going. He stepped out of bounds just as he caught the football at the Los Angeles 12-yard line. He caught it over the head of number 34, Aaron Mitchell. Played for the Dallas Cowboys for a couple years in Tampa Bay. And also behind him was number 20, Tyrone Justin, on the corner route. Ball the Willie Collier comes in this ball game just not at full speed. He's got a little bit of problem with the stomach muscle. It's slightly pulled. But he's able to get enough speed to get between these two players to make the catch and go out of bounds at about the 11-yard line. Willie Collier is the deep threat for the Philadelphia Stars, and they need him in this ballgame. Kelvin Bryant back in now as they mark it at the 11 for the first down. Bryant has it. He's caught. Contact is made behind the line of scrimmage, but Bryant with those long legs runs away from Fletcher Jenkins and gets it on down to about the six. Well, White drain by the it down. That's a perfect example of Kelvin Bryant's strength. Uh, when you see Kelvin run, he's got those long strides, and he just seems to, you know, gallop along, and you don't really see or sense the power he has. 
Now right there, number 90, Fletcher Jenkins, who's a big defensive lineman, had his hands on him, couldn't bring him down. Then he fights, struggles, and he gets up for about a five-yard gain. And a whistle stop him. Quarter's over. First quarter ends just before the snap of the ball. So we played 15 minutes here at the vet. Philadelphia leads 6-0, and they're knocking on the door for a second touchdown. Never fails. Excuse me, uh, Penrose, the coach, offensive coordinator, deciding that they were susceptible to the pass, and although they have a great offensive line, run-blocking line, only nine yards rushing. Running to six, second down. This is Kelvin Bryant to the two. Maybe not quite that far. Mark him on the three. Where Howard Carson, out of Howard Payne, played three years with the Los Angeles Rams, makes the tackle. One would think, with the ball so close to the to the goal line for a touchdown, that you would take advantage of your running game, running attack, keep the ball on the ground. But in a similar situation, of course, Chuck Lucina threw the first touchdown pass of this game from a very short distance. They need about a yard and a half to get a first down. From the three, they send Pitsky in motion. And you see this. Yeah, back at the 14. George Chica fought his way through the traffic and sacked him. He almost had Folsom for the touchdown, but George got there before he could unload it. George Chica is going against Earl Reekman, 75 versus 75, and sometimes the inside guard, Chuck Comiskey. And he told me before the ball game that this was going to be a great challenge for him. And he was up for the game. He looked forward to meeting both those players and showing them what he could do. Well, Achika is a Trojan and the Eatman was a Bruin. That's all the incentive one needs. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Trot for a field goal. Five from 30 yards. He missed the extra point. He kicked five field goals last week. Reardon holds it. Trout hits it. And it's good. And so Philadelphia once again gets something on the scoreboard out of their second possession. And they move out to a 9 to nothing lead with 13.49 to play in the first half. So far in the first half, but we know they're capable of running the ball and just eating up that clock, taking away all of your time. David Trout kicks off. It's very short, and it is out of bounds. He's kinked it. So they'll mark off five yards. David will come back and kick it from the 30, and that should give uh, Kevin Mack and Mel Gray a chance to Re give the Express pretty good yard penalty. field position something that last week the Birmingham Stallions did Never not have nope. throughout the ball game and Philadelphia did. Here's Mike Adamley now with the Stars quarterback Chuck Fusina. Keith, in this banner year of uh, Chuck Fusina, the thing that really has set him apart is his feel for the game. Game by game you seem to, to get better and today you've done it exactly that. They uh, stack against the run and uh, you throw the ball a little bit. I don't know, Mike. Uh, that was a stupid play by me right there taking a sack. I should have got rid of the ball, but our offense is moving ball pretty well, and we know LA's going to score, so we're going to do a better job. Okay, are they style going against the run a little harder than... Uh... No, they, uh, we saw them on films, and they looked excellent all, all, every game we saw them, so we expected a tough game. We know we're going to get one. Okay, keep it up. Thanks, Mark. Keith. Okay, Mark. We'll get him a blue coat, yes. <laughs> <laughs> tough to fit those short X running backs. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding, Mike. From the 30, Trout sails it. Gray accepts it at the 7. Coming to the outside, and he is cut down short of the 30 by Mark McKenz, the hot man for the Philadelphia Stars. Trout kicked that one low, a line driver all the way down the field. When Gray got it, he ran to the 25-yard line before he met Mark McKenz. There was no one else there. You kick one like that, it really gives the offensive team, the kick return team, a chance to set up and get some big yards. But the Philadelphia Stars hot man, Mark McCann, did a great job of getting down there under those circumstances and making a quick tackle. From the 29, first down Los Angeles, they trail 9-0. This is Kevin Nelson. Nelson cuts it back in traffic, gets up to about the 34, close to a five-yard pickup. Willie Roseboro. Makes the tackle. Willie is now playing at a nose tackle position in relief of Pete Kugler for a moment. It's a rather hot day and quite warm down on the artificial surface. 
And let's not forget that Pete Kugler has already played one complete season in the National Football League before coming here. He's a little bit worn out. Willie Roseboro was a running back at Washington, then played tight end, and now he's at nose tackle. Well, there's no first down on that carry by Nelson. That's quite a fist fight down in the, in, in the trenches right now, isn't it? Oh, yes it is. Well, the LA Express, our offensive line, reads like an all-star team with Gary Zimmerman up front, and Wayne, Wayne Jones, Mike Ruther, and Mike Durrett, Jeff Hart. Jeff Hart being the man with the most experience as a leader on that offensive team. But the LA Express have 14 players on their team that were rated in the top 100 in college football this past season. Third down and a short two. The up man, number 27, Kevin Mack, 6'1", 200 out of Clemson, pops in there and has his first down, but there's a penalty flag. Oh, my. Well, uh, that would have been a, a big first down for them just past their own 40-yard line. We're not for the holding penalty. That's the fourth flag in the ball game, and we've got 11.58 to play. Number 57, in off the first half. So the center, Mike Ruther, Still third down. caught hanging on to somebody's coattail. Coming into the ball game, both these teams have been assessed penalty 63 times, so they were fairly even in that particular category. But the express penalty seemed to come at the wrong time, so they're crippling. Timing is everything. Third down and 12 as Young sets up the throw. Gets his pass away down the middle, and he touched it in beautifully. The pass is complete and good for a first down, and that was an all-star pass thrown to JoJo Townsell. Well, who else is favorite receiver? And <laughs> JoJo was tr trying to protect himself a little bit as he runs down the field against his own defense. Now, he's just looking for a zone and opening to curl into. The ball is split in there. He jumps up, brings his knees up. He knows there's a crowd. All he does is get his body up in the air behind the football, protect it, and hopefully himself as he came down. Comes out for just a moment as Young goes back on first down to throw from the 46. And they've got him second sack of the ball game. This time it is Pete Kugler fighting his way through to get him. Pete, Sam Mills, George Cooper did a great job of just rolling in front of the receivers that Steve Young was looking at just as he was about to throw the football. He's reading the defense, looking down the middle of the field. He sees someone he wants to throw to, and just at the last minute, not just the pressure, but he sees that those linebackers rolling underneath, and number 67 comes in to make the sack. Pete Kubler. So the loss is from the 46 all the way back to the 38. Second down and 18. Blitz is on again, and Fielder gets it. Don Fielder. the things that Steve Young was concerned about before the game. 27 is Mike Lush. He's a safety. He comes right up, but it's from the outside. Number 96 downfield to the right end who makes the sack, and they have been blitzing, giving him different looks at the blitz, keeping him off guard throughout the ball game whenever he shows signs of success. Whistle stuff him before the snap. Ball is sitting back ball just start. inside the 30. Number a 60. Start. Offense. It's called against Mike Durrett, right guard, Los Angeles. Fifth flag in the ball game. And that backs him up another five. As Michigan now with Bojovic, 25-yard field goal, has gone in front of New Orleans, three to nothing. They have a good field goal kicker down in New Orleans by the name of Tim Mazzetti, so if it ends up being a kicker's game, it still will be a tough battle. John Hadle prowling the sidelines, his team now backed way up. They try to run a draw with Kevin Nelson and nothing doing. As number 95, William Fuller, the defensive left end from North Carolina, steps in for the tackle. And so it brings out Jeff Partridge, and Philadelphia will get the ball back and should have quite good field position because Partridge is going to have to kick it from about his 14-yard line. Garcia Lane is the return man. Archer's not having the kind of a season this year he had last year with the punt. Last time on that punt, Keith, he didn't get away very far, about 26 yards. He had a very low snap. 
This snap is better, and he gets it out and knocks it out of bounds. There's no return for Lane. The ball goes out of bounds at the 44 of Philadelphia. That was a 36-yard punt by Jeff Partridge. Nine nothing Philadelphia. And Ken Dunnick, a pair of tight ends are in the lineup now. And the lone remaining back is Kelvin Bryant. They bring Pitsky now back to the bottom of the picture and pitch it out to Bryant on a sweep left, cuts it back, and Kelvin gets maybe a yard. And a penalty flag is thrown. So while we're waiting for the penalty call, let's check in with Mike Adamley visiting with Steve Young. Steve, after watching the uh, Stars' performance last week against the Stallions, you must have worked a lot this week on blitz protection. What's happening out there? Oh, that's right. We worked on it all week. We just got a little mixed up, but I, you know, hopefully we'll be able to handle it. I don't think it's a big deal at all. They're not drilling that much different than anything. I just got to get it done to game time. That's not what we're doing right now. We're trying to fix stuff right now. Blowing assignments at all, or uh, just getting beat man to man? Well, no. I think we're just a little confused up front. I, you know, that's something we shouldn't be doing. I'm sure they'll fix it right now. Okay. Number 78, offense. Still first down. Uh, 89. <laughs> 89. Steve Folsom. There's no 78. <laughs> I was wondering who the heck was number 78. The phantom hand holding <laughs> on the offensive line. Ball comes back to the 30. And it's first down and 20 for the Stars. On well, the first break for the Express by the penalty route. Does a hook slide at the 45. So he gets 15 of the 20 back. The Los Angeles secondary with four wide receivers in there had dropped way back. You see all that open space. Now watch the linebackers get out of there. And you see the rush, Keith. Everybody to the outside. The four-man rush. Everyone split to the outside. The receivers. Big hole up in the middle. Until number 46. Darrell Patillo comes in and makes a tackle. Well, not make the tackle, just touch him as Chuck did his little hook slide. Well, watch out for those turf points. There. Second down and five. That ain't second, Chuck. Bryant. Kelvin Bryant with the first down. And finally caught from behind by Eddie Weaver, number 61. Number Eddie Weaver played at nose guard a year ago, move over to defensive end, and that's the first time we've called his name today. There's a flag down on the play. Clip, I think. Holding. Oh, holding. Well, another break for the LA Express. Nullifies a good run by Kelvin Bryant and a great block by number 35, David Riley, on the play. Now Philadelphia is starting to make some mistakes. The only game they lost, they had five turnovers and had a lot of mistakes up at New Jersey. Keith, you started talking about a weekend where it seems all the teams that are supposed to win end up losing. And sometimes this is how it starts. Holding. Number 75. Offense. Still second down. Big Irv got caught that time. Yeah. You start making mistakes. Little things here and there. You end up with good field position. You lose your field position. And the opposition makes a good drive. Now the LA team has been moving the ball except against the blitz against Philadelphia. Instead of having it down around the 32 of Los Angeles, they're second down and 15 back on their own 35. You've seen it with a lot of time. Screen for Kelvin Bryant. Carson's after him. Carson's got him. Howard Carson brings Kelvin Bryant down short of the line of scrimmage. You, you might call this, that would play the education of Troy West. Troy West, number 47, the rookie safety, came up, read the screen to make the tackle on Kelvin Bryant. And Kelvin just turned him inside out as he was doing his little dance, trying to find some room to run. All in all, though, it was still a great play for the defensive team of the LA Express. Third down and a whole bunch of yards. About 16. Philadelphia leading 9 to nothing with 7.59 to play in the first half. You see it? Goes down the middle way to this kick off. Intercepted by Troy West. West. With some good help downfield, takes it inside the 25, down to the 20. Troy West, 6-1, 205, and Fusina let one get away down the middle. He tried to force it, and he wasn't there. That's what I call a fast learner, Keith. <laughs> he just dropped back. Now watch the rush, Keith. 
you see inside number 61 Eddie Weaver doesn't rush he's standing right there in the middle looking for the screen now man-to-man -man coverage but West was sitting in the middle just waited for Fasina to pick up the receiver coming across and stepped right in front of it 27 yards on the return for Troy West West was the one who made the interception in the overtime win in Houston too and the ball that was thrown behind the receiver and Fusina just missed his man that time and so Los Angeles now with a first down at the Philadelphia 20. Let's see if they can do something with it. This is Mel Gray. He's on his way. He's in. down. Mel Gray, rookie out of Purdue. He's only 5 feet 9 inches tall, 175 pounds. He was just scooting along the AstroTurf, following his blocking, reading the holes all the way down the, all the way down into the end zone. His second touchdown of the season. Somebody threw a heck of a block for him. Well, he almost right fell here. over, trying to make up his mind, reading, looking. He sees he has a little alleyway. Townsell didn't exactly block the fellow, but he got in the way. Enough. That's what they teach receivers, Keith. They can be the difference between a touchdown and almost a touchdown just by positioning on the block. Philadelphia is going to be called for encroachment as Zendejas hits his 21st consecutive extra point. So I'm sure they'll wave that off and the point will be called good. Uh, Troy West is a happy man. Here's Mike Whitty. Well, Keith, as you mentioned earlier, Troy West does have a knack for the big interception. You had that one against the, uh, the Gamblers and now today. Mm -hmm. you read it all the way, huh? Yeah, it was something there throwing the ball down the middle. I guess this the last game against Pittsburgh. We worked in practice on breaking on the ball. That's just what I did, broken the ball. I know you're tutored by a great All-Pro, former All-Pro, Mel Renfro. How big a help has he been? Hey, Mel's a great help. He just gives us the little things that we need. Okay. You know, cover everything. Well, I just want to say, happy Mother's Day to my mom. Love you. <laughs> okay, Keith. Today you can do it, Troy. <laughs> They're going to have to kick it again because the call went against uh, the Express. Apparently somebody had moved and had a false start of something. Already One of the Philadelphia men had crossed the neutral zone. Now timeout is called by Philadelphia, but there was no penalty assessed, was there? It does not appear to be one. No. Assessed. Well, already that missed PAT by David Trout looms big as the score right now is 6-9. to nine. And should they convert on their point after touchdown, it will only be a two-point ball game. Here's an end zone look at the run by Mel Gray. Now, he almost falls down right about in here. See him stagger a little bit? Yeah, then he gets the help from Townsell and breaks it in. Townsell and number 72, Jeff Hart, was downfield looking for someone to block, but ah, Gray went by him rather quickly. <laughs> I'll tell you, if this Mel Gray has the same career as the other Mel Gray had in the NFL, he'll have quite a career, won't he? Yeah. And now we're told that that breaks a string of... Uh, a pass is thrown by Chuck Pacina of 93 consecutive passes without having had one picked off. But I think he just tried to force that one. Well, I, I, don't, I don't think he really tried to force it. I think he just didn't see Troy West. He saw the receiver coming across the middle. He had an eye on him, and he was so concentrated on that receiver, he just didn't pick Troy up. Well, they're going to re-kick it, so it must be Los Angeles to be penalized on the kickoff. As Zendejas knocks it straight through, and it's now a two-point difference in the ball game. Philadelphia 9, Los Angeles 7, with 7 minutes and 22 seconds to play in the first half of the bet. We seem to be getting ourselves into a trauma over a five-yard penalty, but it was against Philadelphia. It came before the snap. It is assessed on the kickoff, and uh, Zendejas will kick it from the 40, and we've got Mark McCanch now standing deep to return, averaging better than 24 yards per return the kickoffs for Philadelphia. Zendejas of Nevada, Reno. High and low. McCants will not return that when he's beyond the end zone. And so the Philadelphia Stars will go to work first down at the 20. Zendejas getting his opportunity to have an effect in this ball game. Not allowing Philadelphia to even attempt to get better field position with its kickoff return team. And that's their worst field position of the game on their own 20-yard line. Riley and Bryant set behind Fusina now. And it's Bryant 
to about the 23. Just in case you missed the scores from games on Friday, Chicago beat Denver at Denver 29 to 17, which opened up some immediate possibilities for Los Angeles, dropping Denver's record to seven and five. Los Angeles coming into this ball game at five and six, and Arizona is playing at Oakland this afternoon, also with a record of five and six. But I think the biggest upset, one of the biggest of the season, was Washington beating New Jersey 31 to 17. A big upset, second down and seven, Philadelphia. You see it to throw it. Looks for Pitsky. He's got him, but now he has no time. He runs out of time as Dewey Forte, a rookie out of Bethune Cookman, gets in and grabs him and decks him. Forte, 6'3", 270, just 20 years of age. Second sack of the Philadelphia quarterback. Well, Bethune came in with a trade, uh, also along with Lee Williams of Tampa Bay. Rights to these young men. They feel that they're excellent defensive rushers, especially Williams who come in on some plays. Look, if you've seen this, just looking for some place to throw the football, he realizes there's no one downfield, dropped to the ground instead of losing more yards. When he went left, he lost vision with uh, Fitzky, but the Scott was available to him on this side of the field. Third down now and 15. 9-7 ball game, if you see the back. Dumps it off to Bryant, and Bryant is going to go down at the 19. Howard Carson, first man to get to it. That's it looked like Kelvin had room, didn't it? Kelvin had room. It was a really excellent open field tackle by Howard. Kelvin Brown, we've seen him already in this ball game, fake a number of people just out of their shoes in open field situations. But Howard came in and made a great play. Somebody's down on the field getting up very slowly, and it's number 75. Georgia Chica. Now he's running off the field. Dragging a leg a little bit. Yeah. Gunn is back now for the Philadelphia punt. Sean Landetta averaging 41 and a half per kick on 30 punts this season. Number two in the USFL. Dwayne Gunn, a rookie out of Indiana. Oh, that's a high hanger. And it immediately forces Gunn to think about and go ahead and call fair catch. Because once he saw the ball get up to the apex and just hang there, he knew he wasn't going to have any time. There's a penalty flag thrown back at the 20. It's against Philadelphia. And I'd make him kick it over again. So would I. <laughs> Even though the ball is on the 39-yard line, excuse me, the 41-yard line, which is good field position, I take a chance that maybe Sean Landetta won't get as much into this one. Or at least have a chance of getting a return because he put it that one so high that by the time it came down on the fair catch, the only people that were around the returner were four red jerseys from the Philadelphia Stars. So they back them up to the 14. I'd also see... Illegal motion, number 56, offense. Still fourth down. I, Keith, I would also consider putting on a rush at this point. If you figure Sean Landell is going to get off another point, another good punt, put some pressure on them, and the returner can still fair catch it. One is high and it's almost as good again a fair catch is called and it's right about the same spot <laughs> well so they put it up to landetta and he responded he just kicked it five yards farther that was a 46 yarder with 527 to go in the first half of play the ball at their own 41 they trail by two points so obviously with a little offensive movement here they're in a position to go ahead and perhaps lead at halftime over philadelphia well, the mistakes by the Philadelphia offense has given L.A. the opportunity and the interception by Troy West. Young fumbles the football. It is kicked out of the stack, and Nelson has to go all the way back inside the 30 to recover it. No. The old takeaway giveaway column there. That time they didn't give it away when they fumbled the ball. Yeah, but instead of having it out on the... 41. Now they're sitting back on the 29 where it's second down and 22. So it's like being penalized again. <laughs> 35 times, Keith, this year they have fumbled the football. This is Kevin Nelson. And he's up to about the 32. Give him three yards. Ran a long way to get three yards. Running east and west into the 
linebackers, 54 Sam Mills and 56 George Cooper, looking for a place to run. Third down at about 20. 21. No, 20. Long. Long. Third and long. Shotgun. the play, Garcia Lane. Penalty flag goes down. It's going to be against Lane. So what they're going to call, Keith, Garcia Lane, when he came over to try and stop that play, if it goes against Lane, it's that he put his hands on his shoulders to jump up to get a hand on that football. And that's exactly what they do. Steve Young had a tremendous amount of time. He needed it to get his receivers downfield. Here's a pass he should anticipate more. The ball should have already been on, on its way so that number 26, Townsell, would not have to back up for the football and drift. Here he starts to drift. He goes back. There's a the contact. Garcia Lane. Defense. First down. Garcia Lane just got a left hand up on his shoulder as he went up to knock the ball down. And the Boo Birds from Philadelphia are out in force. Not happy at all with the call. It is the first down for Los Angeles at the 42. Young keeps it. And a fine play by... I couldn't tell who it was. Glenn Howard, I think it was. A linebacker reached out and got him by the foot. Number 57, Mike Ruther was a man who covered the ball as Steve Young dropped it, even though the official that had already blown the whistle. Steve Young had a lot of time to throw. Number 30, Mel Gray, you see him drifting out at the bottom of the picture. He was there waving his hands. You see him, I'm open, I'm open, you're in trouble, get me the ball. Number 95, William Fuller putting pressure on him. He continues to scramble, scramble, decides to run with the football, picks up two yards in all that time. Second down and eight. This is Mel Gray, who had the 20-yard touchdown run. And Gray gets it on the Philadelphia side of the field to about the 40, close to the 46, where it will be third down. William Fuller made the tackle, but you got to give the credit to number 56, George Cooper. We've, we've been talking about these linebackers for the Philadelphia Stars. And on that play, Cooper just stood up the offensive blocker, played him off, gave... Number 30, Mel Gray, no place to run. He was just waiting, holding back on the speed, looking for a place to go, seeing which way the hole would open up. But Cooper just shut it down, turned him inside. Express me three yards to keep it. They go to Gray. And Gray's got the first down as he reaches the Stars 35, where Garcia Lane shoves him out of bounds. And a big hole open on the left side with Gary Zimmerman and Wayne Jones. Gary Zimmerman played guard all of his career, never played tackle before. They made the switch this year when uh, Addix, the guard from Baylor, uh, was injured, moved him, the tackle was uh, injured, moved him to the outside. He's been playing very, very well. Gray now with 55 yards on six carries and a touchdown. And the time remaining, 2.05 in the first half. Young back. Freddie Scott's there. He's got it out of bounds. 11-yard line. First down, Los Angeles on the Philadelphia 11. And that time, Young anticipated and got the ball there as Scott made his cut. Number 26, Jonathan Sutton was a man covering on the play. Freddie Scott, many years, 10 years of experience, comes down, he runs the corner route, had Sut Sut Sutton completely turned around, had my voice turned around too, as he runs a little flag route, put two feet in. You've got two minutes to play, actually 1.59 in the first half, so time is out at the two minute warning, and Los Angeles now is bidding to take the lead in the ball game. comes to the left, Townsell goes to the right. Young pitches the ball back to Mel Gray. And how do you do, Mr. Antonio Gibson, the strong safety? First time we've called his name. He's playing now this year, his natural position, a strong safety. 
He is an aggressive ball player, good tough ball player. You see him to the left, middle of the screen. He gets up on that line of scrimmage, takes off. He sees it's a run all the way. He beats the pulling guard and makes the tackle. Back up to 15, a loss of about four. So it's second down and 14. Young is caught behind the line of scrimmage. This time it is Mike Lutz. Don't tell me Vince Tobin can't coach defense. Oh boy, <laughs> I'll tell you. I go back to that uh, remarkable Chicago-Philadelphia playoff game a year ago when Tobin turned all kinds of things loose defensively, and here he's doing it again. And a game before that against Michigan when his team was getting beat uh, by the Michigan Panthers and on the one-on-one -on -one matchups in this game on one-on-one -on -one matchups. The LA Express has been holding its own. They have been moving and driving down the field. But once they decide, once the stars start glitching, they've been tremendously successful. All right, they're back on the 24. Two sacks have lost 13 yards. This is Mel Gray trying to get to the sidelines, and they can't get there. And the clock is running at 55 seconds, and Jonathan Sutton along with George Cooper on the tackle, and it is fourth down. So they will still have a chance here to go for the lead in the football game as Zendejas comes out with a kicking tee in 41 seconds and clock running. Keith, these blitzes have been coming right up the middle that Philadelphia has been using. Uh, one by Antonio Gibson wasn't a blitz. He just read the play, came in from the outside. Uh, they may just have to go off the resort to zone blocking on that offensive line on third down play. 36 yards. Zendejas hits it and knocks it through, but there are penalty flags and whistles, and I think they came before the snap. Looked like the offensive line of the Express, someone just stood up, started to stand up before the ball was snapped. That'll back him up five yards. So that will then be a 41-yard field goal. start, five. offense. Well, you said uh, the Los Angeles Express looked like an all-star team. I'm just going to flat say what I was thinking when you said it. They look like an all-star team because they still haven't melded together as a, as a joint unit. Well, all-star in terms of talent, but as we've seen in so many postseason bowl games uh, of all-star teams, they don't have enough time to work together. A lot of moves have been made, but right now, Tony Zendejas, one of those all-stars, has to try it again to try and put his team ahead by one. From 41 yards. Hits the upright and kicks away. Hit the right upright and kick back. Tony Zendejas to walk right across the field and shake hands with Dave Trout. We've seen that happen three times this year to David. It is not a good feeling. This team would have gone out by one. A little mistake. Well, Zendejas was 12 out of 13 inside 43 yards, and this one was from 41. Had plenty of leg, as you can see. But it hit it dead center. Dead center. Had no chance of bouncing inside or outside. Just bounced away. So the Los Angeles Express, Express turned away with 16 seconds to play in the first half. You see that takes the snap and they'll go to the clubhouse. A little bit of a story to be told as the final seconds wear off here. In the first quarter, the Philadelphia offensive team totaled 115 yards. In the second quarter, the Philadelphia offense totaled one yard. That's why the score at halftime is Philadelphia 9, Los Angeles 7, and Los Angeles would have had the lead if they could have taken away just a couple of mistakes. It's, ha it's halftime. Point is, they are very much in the hunt against the 10-1 and one stars as Mark McKent goes deep. He's out of Temple. 195 pounds. Tony Zendejas, 160 pounder out of Nevada, Reno, will kick it off for Los Angeles. And the sky now is quite covered with clouds. They're expecting thunderstorms this evening. McCants comes three yards out of the end zone. And got away with it. He got away with it. George Cooper, number 56, gave him a great block to open up a hole for him. So Philadelphia now, that's uh, looked very impressive in their first possession of the ball game. In fact, the first two. But since that time, they've been stuttering and stumbling around and not playing terribly well. But don't forget, at every point in every football season, every team lets down a little bit somewhere along the way. And they came off an emotional big win last week 
at Birmingham. That's what Jim Mora was worried about. From just outside the 20, Bryant caught at the line of scrimmage. Good penetration by number 53, Danny Rich, linebacker out of Weber State. He did, did a great job to submarine him, taking Kelvin Bryant right off his feet. Of course, Keith, the last time the Philadelphia Stars lost at home, and the only time they've lost on the home field was in 1983 against the Tampa Bandits. Yeah, we did that bogey. Twice in 1984, they've had to come from behind to win football games. Of course, they were not behind today. They were leading 9-7 as we started the second half. They were down 21-6 at Arizona and came back to win 22-21. You see now, he's caught behind the line of scrimmage by Georgia Chica. Looked downfield, there was pressure. He didn't have a man downfield, and Chica got to him. You know, in, in making the switch with Eddie, Eddie Weaver putting him out there as a defensive end, Watch number 61. He puts pressure on the outside. Number 75, Georgia Chica. Pressure in the middle, but more importantly, he stays at home with this pressure. So as Eddie Weaver forced Fusina out of the pocket, up the middle, George was there to make the tackle. On third down and about 12 now, they've sent Lee Williams into the ball game, number 73. He's developing into their best pass rusher. Fusina has a lot of time runs out of time as number 90 Fletcher Jenkins trying to go outside step back inside and then force Fusina to dump it off and Los Angeles should get very good field position in their first offensive possession of the second half so the defensive unit for LA which has been growing steadily holds Philadelphia and will force the punt Sean Landetta's only punt in the first half was good for 46 yards and Dwayne Gunn is the deep man for Los Angeles standing back at his own 44 Mr. Landetta can sometimes nail it, but he didn't nail that one. It's got pretty good carry, and it's a tail dragger, so it takes a Philadelphia bounce, and Gunn picks it up. And Gunn did the right thing. If he'd left the ball keep on bouncing, it would have rolled down around the 20 or inside the 20. Dwayne comes back to midfield after a 45-yard punt by Landetta. And so Los Angeles now will go to work, trailing by just two. Hmm, I see it. A lot of coaches feel that that's really the major difference in closely matched football team. Mel Gray from midfield, one yard, as he tried to slant over the left side, and there was waiting for him was Pete Kugler, number 67. And when you're trying to get field position against a team like the Philadelphia Stars, you have to back them up in their own territory offensively because they have such an excellent punter in Sean Landetta. Wayne Jones comes out for Los Angeles, and Terry Krauss goes in to replace him at a guard spot. Second down and nine from the Philadelphia 49. That's Percy, the H-back in motion. A little quick pop over to the side goes to Freddie Scott. Scott is caught from behind. Now William you Fuller looked like. Got it. William Fuller. What they were doing were the play action, trying to run the quick screen to the wide receiver to the outside. He fakes the ball to Miller. He just turns right back around. Now the line sprints to the outside, but there's just not much room. Freddie Scott would have liked to have got one step on Big Fuller, but Fuller just went down the line of scrimmage and got in between his blocks. Third down at about eight. Out of the shotgun, Young back. Does it himself, but he does not get the first down as he is dropped at the 44 of Philadelphia. So Los Angeles comes out now and is unable to do anything with the football. Sam Mills made that tackle. Just looked like Steve Young took off and had decided he was going to run no matter what happened. He took the ball in the long snap passing situation. He doesn't get back very long and he takes off. He doesn't really have any place to run. It's just very crowded downfield. <laughs> Seed number 56, Cooper laying out Mike Durrett. Jeff Partridge to punt. No pressure on Partridge. And it's not a particularly good kick. They finally come back up around the 20. That's where they mark it out. Well, the LA Express could not take advantage of their field position. Again, 
they rest the burden on their defense. What in the world? Now, you, you weren't a punter. In the beginning, man's feet walked free. But the road to civilization was paved. So man developed shoes. Soon after that, man developed athlete's foot. He got Today, there's Mycotin. Mycotin cures athlete's foot. It's the only athlete's foot medicine you can buy with Myconazole, a patented ingredient recommended by specialists to cure athlete's foot. Mycotin, now also available in new spray liquid. Mycotin, the end of the road for athlete's foot. Selling today, it's tough. Just one sales call. Philadelphia will start about six inches short of its 20 after a 26-yard punt by Parker. Riley, fullback. Eye back is Bryant. And Harris in motion. And it's Bryant. The Los Angeles defensive people have handled the running game very well so far today as Bryant picks up about three. Here's Mike Adamley now. Sam chasing a guy like Steve Young all afternoon can make uh, give a linebacker a few gray hairs. You've done a pretty good job of containing him so far. What did the coach talk about at halftime as far as containment? Well, we just have to keep containing him and not let him scramble around and, and throw the ball for the big play. We've been doing a pretty good job with it right now, and we hope we can keep uh, containing him. Okay, Sam. Keep. He's a busy fellow. Pretty rough customer. Fine football player. Second down and seven for Philadelphia. again. Jenkins can't handle him, but Fletcher gets some help from Dwight Drain, a rookie out of Oklahoma, and the L.A. strong safety takes him out of bounds. Well, took him out right along the line of scrimmage. Jenkins couldn't hold him, but he did a great job in taking out a blocker for Kelvin Bryant, holding him up until Dwight Drain could read the play and come up right there in the line of scrimmage. He just takes on Folsom, and then he couldn't make the play himself, but Dwight Drain comes over, and Drain gets a little help from Wyman Henderson. Bryant has handled the ball 11 times today, Lynn Swan, for 16 yards. So he's off his pace, too. Three wide people. As you see, it drops back on third down and seven. Gets his pass away, and it's intercepted. No. It's uh, ricochet and trapped by Tyrone Justin. He dove for it, but it skitters up off the grass. Keith, as we watch this replay, one thing I have noticed on the sideline of the Philadelphia Stars was that they were working on the leg of the nose guard, Pete Kugler. You know, and Pete is a big part. You see why the referee called that one down. As a big part of that defensive team, and they can try and find out whether Pete's going to be able to play or not. They had this for working on his left leg. Landetta hits it a mile, forcing a fair catch call by Gunn back inside the 30 at the 29. So Sean Landetta again does his job as he nails a 49-yard kick. And Los Angeles will go to work first down at its 29. In the third quarter so far, Los Angeles going from its 29 now. Landetta in three punts, 140 yards. Partridge in three punts, 88 yards. So that's a 52-yard plus margin for the Philadelphia kicker. The ball is handed to Tony Bodie. And Bodie, who came out of Montana State to be a steady performer for Los Angeles in their opening year, gets good yardage up across the 35. Let's find out something about this Philadelphia running game and its problem as Mike Adamley talks to Irv Eatman. Irv, you guys are all bogged down. It seems like after the interception by Troy West, that was the end of the Philadelphia offense. What's happening out there? Well, you know, they're really overplaying a lot of the plays that we like to run, and so far we really haven't been able to get anything going on a consistent basis, but... Uh, we're not really overly concerned. We feel like we keep doing what we do best, and we'll be all right before the game's over with. Okay, Irv, thank you. Thanks. Keith? Second down in two. As Mel Gray dances around, looks for a hole, finds one, goes to the 45, first down, Los Angeles. Well, if there's a running game, the only place it's existing right now in this ball game is on the side of the LA Express, behind the running of Mel Gray. He's doing a good job taking advantage of a little bit of blocking up front, picking his way downfield. Number 67, Pete Kugler, is in the ball game. Right there, he was being taken out on the inside by number 57, Mike Ruther. If Pete Kugler plays every game, Keith, of this season, and if the Philadelphia Stars get into the playoffs, he will play a minimum of 41 ball games in a year. Out to Townsell, wide receiver screen. Can't handle it. 
Garcia Lane read it well, played it well. They obviously think this play can be a big play for them. It's the second time they've thrown it this year. It's a play that is going to be successful based on timing and, of course, the ability of your lineman to get out there and get some blocks on the corner. Lyman came out there, number 57, the center, Mike Ruther, to take on Garcia. Made contact, but was not able to put him down as Garcia just backed away from the block then came in to make the tackle on JoJo. They got a little more than five yards on the play, so it's second down and a short five from midfield. And here goes Gray down on the 48. Young, 9 out of 11 in passing now for 100 yards. Glenn Howard made that stop on Gray. So once again, they're facing a third down conversion, third and about four, as they mark him at the 49, and Bodie goes onto the field for the Express. Los Angeles will go home after this ball game today to play Michigan in Los Angeles next week. And that's one of the games we'll be covering for you here on ABC. Goes inside the 40 and out of bounds at the Philadelphia 38. Mike Lush shoved him out. Gray took that handoff, sprinting to his right on the sweep, Keith. And the whole time, he kept feigning, faking that little dip into the line. And what that does is can help set up blocks. If they think he's coming in, the defensive people have to straighten up right there. He stepped in. Gibson straightened out. Was able to get the block on Gibson. Found more room to get to the outside before he's knocked out of bounds by Mike Lush. More importantly, the big first down. Heck of a block from Bodie. Yes. Young, quick, Townsell. Picks up about it. Seven. I thought that ball might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage. It sort of died right in front of JoJo, but he went down and fetched it. Picked it up. Scooped it up like a little ice cream cone. Those are not the easiest passes in the world. And once you get down there on one knee trying to hold on to it, you know a defensive back has got a bead on about the third bit further break. <laughs> He's looking to inflict some punishment. Gray again. Going for the first down over the right side, and he's close to it. Yeah, they're very close, Keith. They'll probably take a measurement for this, depending on how they mark it. I think they probably should bring in the chain. I did not expect this to be a defensive football game. Uh, neither did I. I thought there was, there was a great chance that the Philadelphia Stars would take this team apart, the way they've been playing their last two football games. But the LA Express is playing them very tough. They're not going to measure this a third down. Short. But well, I think you can expect to see the entire Philadelphia defense up on the line of scrimmage this time. I don't think it's a place for a quarterback sneak. Gray's got the first down. Steve Young called a slant over the left side, and he just kept kind of sliding along until he found enough room to stretch out. And the stretch got him the first down. It's almost like he was running and leaning into his blockers. Yeah, just and then as along. soon as the hole opened up, he just kind of fell through it. And you'll see as he's falling through, if he had just sprinted to the outside, Gibson, who was facing inside, would not have been able to turn and make the tackle in time. He could have been gone. Yep, touchdown. He's going outside. But he's a man who listens to his coaching when the play is supposed to go between the guard and the tackle. That's so where he goes. Here comes the blitz. And they break it as Gray is having a big day. Inside the 20, down close to the 17. Keith, in most cases, when a team blitzes, what's the first thing the offensive team thinks of doing to counter the blitz? Throwing the little pass, a quick pass to offset it. The LA Express team has not had a great deal of success, at, well, no success at all, throwing against the blitz. I think they were looking for it each time they came out with these running plays. And now they finally get it, and they take advantage of it by running the football. Let the blitz go right by them. Mel Gray now has 90 yards on 14 carries as L.A. calls timeout. And remember, no back has ever run for 100 yards against the Philadelphia defense. It was a big problem. As while we were doing our telecasts, the only thing I could recall were the reports on the floods all across the Salt Lake 
Greg Loberg is in at center replacing Mike Ruther. Ruther out trying to walk off a leg whip here and uh, we've got some contact along the line of scrimmage and penalty flag. I think it's going to go against Philadelphia. They made contact. Encroachment number 95 defense. All right now that's seven penalties against Philadelphia. But they're catching up. <laughs> and it all started in the second second period of this ball game and those penalties now and then have cost them dearly. Instead Los of Angeles now knocking on the door just inside the 13. This fielder making contact. Gray and Gray goes to the 10 for the better part of three yards where it'll be second down. No mystery at this point, Keith, about what the Philadelphia Stars will do down here. They're going to blitz. Going to put as much pressure as they possibly can. As Steve Young is not going to throw the football, then they'll just keep everybody close to the line of scrimmage looking for the run. They've got Scott and Townsell both wide now. Gray into the middle, goes to the eight. Well, that's the long way up the middle. Nope, they mark him on the nine. So it's third down and seven. Short seven. For the first down. Nine yard, long nine for the TD. Zendejas is cranking up on the uh, sidelines. In case he gets the call. And we've got a penalty flag on the goal line. We talked about the ability of Steve Young to run the football, and you see him running off the field. He's saying it's against Philadelphia. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 26, defense. Penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Jonathan Sutton is number 26. We talked about the ability of this young man to run. His desire, Sam Mills comes in and almost has him. He's blocked off just a little bit. Then Steve Young goes into his act. He turns the corner and the whole time he's looking to run the football, his mind was made up. He was not looking downfield, didn't want to take anything away from his ability to run the football. He just took off. Zendejas for the extra point. It is good. You've got three minutes and 18 seconds to play in the third quarter. The Los Angeles Express has gone ahead of the Philadelphia Stars 14 to 9. The list Oklahoma, Houston. So check your local listing for your game in your area. Sam Mills almost made the play on Young. Number 56, the set, uh, left tackle Gary Zimmerman is a man who just knocked him off. Saw Sam running by him unblocked, and maybe that was his assignment on that particular blitz. I don't know, but he adjusted in time to give Steve Young the room he needed. The 15-yard penalty call against Jonathan Sutton now was the eighth in the ball game against Philadelphia, and Zendejas will kick off from midfield. The history of Tony, it doesn't figure that uh, he's going to give McCants a chance to return kicking from midfield. And he won't. Kicked it right on through the uprights, didn't he? Yes, he did. So while they come back to the 20, there was a, a happening in the USFL during the past week that I think could have tremendous significance on the future of the league, particularly in the city of Chicago, as you see today's attendance. For Eddie Einhorn and Jerry Reinsdorf, who are the owners of the Chicago White Sox, have been granted the franchise for next year to operate in Chicago. And it won't necessarily be the blitz either. But the point is that you've got two people who are already in business in Chicago who know the city and know something about the marketing business. It'll be very interesting. It could be a very important move in the USFL. Spring pass, David Riley. He's got a convoy. And he's got a first down for Philadelphia at the Los Angeles 44. David Riley 
has come on to be a significant force in the 1984 season. And their 35-0 route of the New Orleans Breakers two weeks ago, it was David Riley who caught the same pass, the screen pass, same side of the field, who went the distance of about 45 yards for a touchdown. This time he had some great blocking, shows he's got some pretty good foot speed as Aaron Mitchell, number 34, finally drags him down. So Philadelphia trying to answer, trailing 14 to nine. Piusina back to throw, goes down the middle, Collier! And a great hit by Mitchell, knocks the ball loose. The ball was right on Willie's numbers, and Mitchell hit him at precisely the right time to knock it loose. Willie Collier out of the University of Pittsburgh should have hung on to that one. Aaron Mitchell again played for Dallas, played for Tampa Bay, time to just right, goes straight for the tackle. He's not worrying about trying to strip the football, but applying as much force as he can and successfully knocks the ball away. He's a good leader in the secondary. Second down, 10. Piusina throws it for Fitzke, and he's lucky to get it back because actually Wyman Henderson had a better chance to catch it than did Fitzke. And he just dropped that one. It was they were trying to run a little pick play. Number 89, Folsom, the tight end, had come out to run a short little out pattern that was only about four or five yards deep. Fitzke waited for him to come out, then tried to just slant right by him, pick off the corner, but it was Wyman Henderson that read it Stepped inside, and if he had picked that one off, it might have been more points. Nicholas is in for Los Angeles now on third down and 10, 44-yard line of Los Angeles. Philadelphia trailing by five. Harvins and Bryant in the backfield. You've seen it a throw. Ducks it on the sidelines, and the pass is incomplete, thrown out of bounds. Henderson was defending Pitsky on the play. Once again, the Los Angeles defense stands its ground. They gave up the one big play to Riley, but nothing after that. And Landetta comes in to kick. Landetta has killed the ball in his punting this year 13 times. That's 43% of his kicks. He has put out of bounds or killed inside the 20. But this one looks like it's going to go to the end zone. And it does. No, no, it does not. You're kidding. I thought he was over the line. It's Mark McKent that makes the play. Mark McKent, the hot man on all the special teams. Number 20 did an excellent job. The ball was bouncing. Looked like it was going to bounce into the end zone. The official was just outside the line. He saw it. You see it bounce up. It. He hits it. Sets it down before he gets to the goal line. Special teams never discount. No nope. credit. The influence that they have on a football game. It's a 40-yard punt and dead on the four. Well, that's how they started the game last week. 40-plus yards on a punt, killed it on the Birmingham one, and the Stallions never really recovered from it. Crowd coming up for it as Young hands it off inside to Kevin Mack, a rookie out of Clemson, and he's out to about the seven for three yards. You've got a Los Angeles player down. So you got a timeout for the injured player. It's Greg Loberg, the center. Mike Ruther was uh, out and was sitting down. They were working on his leg a while ago. Terry Crouch of Oklahoma, number 69, goes in. And I'm looking around to see where uh, Ruther might be. Ruther's sitting on the end of the bench. Middle of the field, he has one shoe off. No tape on the shoe. Now he's getting on the table. And the trainer is working very, very quickly to wrap up his left ankle to get him in the ball game. So it looks like Terry Crouch is going to be put into an unfamiliar position of having to play center while they frantically work on Ruther, trying to get him ready to go back into the ball game. Oh, this is where the trainer is going to earn some money as you see the very quick job he's doing on that ankle. They're working on the leg of Loberg. Greg is a rookie out of California. In play selection today for the Los Angeles Express now, Lynn Swan, and this is kind of an interesting decision by the offensive people of Los Angeles, including Sid Gilman. 
They've run the ball 33 times and thrown it just 12. Well, I think it's fairly obvious why that has occurred, uh, not necessarily by design in the game plan, but because of the effectiveness, the effectiveness of the Philadelphia Stars' defensive rush in passing situations, particularly their ability to blitz and to have an effect on this team. The LA Express, not once have I seen them able to pick up that blitz and get significant yards out of it. Lovers looks situation. like he's hurt. See him dragging a knee like that. That's bad news. So Big Greg is being helped off the field. Mike Ruther's frantically trying to get his shoe on. And let's check in for a moment with Mike Adamley. Keith, Mike Ruther a strain and a sprain, the ligament that extends between the tibia and fibula. They gave him a great tape job. He put his shoe back on. He's walking in a little bit of pain. He's just going to have to gut it out and play for the club here. But nothing's broken, and he should be able to do all right. But as uh, Loberg comes off, that looks bad. Who's going to snap the ball? Wayne Jones is going to snap it. The starting guard moves over to center. Well, it's a tough place to have a, a guard snapping the ball. They give it to Mel Gray, and Gray hits out across the 10 to about the 11. So they'll be looking at third down and close to three. New Orleans now in the fourth quarter, leading the Michigan Panthers by a score of seven to three. Well, well, well. I don't think New Orleans is, uh, is throwing the ball all that much today either. Third and three. Steve Young's pass, swung out for Hersey, gets the first down, crosses the 25, hit the chalk, however, at the 21, out of bounds. Most importantly, it's a first down. It gets him out of a hole. And it's seven straight completions for Steve Young. I'm very surprised, Keith. I thought for sure that Philadelphia would blitz because every time they set back against the LA, LA Express, Steve Young has been able to move his football team. Passing situation, they didn't blitz. I think he anticipated, that's why he had the short route called Hershey, able to make the catch, turn his body upfield, and pick up the first down. From the 26th is where they mark it, out to Townsell, and JoJo is thrown out of bounds, up near the 40, and that will be another Los Angeles first down. Their coaching staff and the players on the sideline were yelling for a flag, but didn't get it. Garcia Lane was in a bit of a melee over there with Townsell. Well, Cooper and Lane, over there making the play. You see Lena take the pass to go the bounce out. Watch he steps out and watch when Cooper comes over and hits him. Yes, Cooper got there late, didn't he? Yes. They marked him just across the 40, where it's another first down for Los Angeles. Oh boy. Express gaining some momentum here in his third quarter. You've got 29 seconds to play. And they lead 14 to 9. Young whips it downfield. Oh, he's got a mistake. Throws it right into the hands of Garcia Lane. to Jojo Townsell. He never did look to me like he even looked at it. Well, he didn't look. He threw it to a point. Almost looked like he may have run the wrong route. And he just threw it right into the hands of Garcia Lane. Townsell was going by Lane. Had he thrown that ball deep, Townsell may have been able to make the catch. Lane took off down the sideline, picked up some blocks. Steve Young was able to run across, get in front of Sam Mills and in front of Garcia Lane uh, and got some help. Forty-six yards on the return to Garcia Lane. It's first and goal Philadelphia on the Los Angeles two. But it looked like the Express were just picking up a head of steam and starting to hike it downfield. It blows up in their face. Time remaining in the third quarter. Well, there have only been two turnovers in the entire ball game, one each, one by L.A., the interception by Troy West, 26-yard return that set up the touchdown by Mel Gray, that's right.
Brad Milgrath who scored the touchdown after the Troy West interception. Wayne Jones, who had gone in at the reserve center spot, he's down on the sideline. So they've worn out all their centers. Ruther's playing, going to have to play hurt. Loberg was hurt, came off dragging a knee. And now Jones, who had moved over from guard to center, he's hurt on the sideline. And it's that kind of information that a Raul any head coach, Don Halo, pacing up and down the field. He just cannot believe what's happening to his football team. Everything seemed to be going in his favor yep. from the second quarter on. Steve Young moving the football. One injury to his center. His backup been hurt. Now Jones hurt. Ball picked off. The only turnover by the LA Express today. Down to the two-yard line, and now their offense breaks hello. Trying to put points on. First and goal from the two. offensive line. Irv Eatman, Chuck Kamiski, center Bart Oates, and a little help from Kelvin Bryant, number 44, and he's in. Time has expired in the third quarter. They're going to kick the extra point at that end of the field. And they're going for two. They're going for two. They've got three seconds to get it off. Yusina gets it away. Yeah, a lot And you got a fight breaking out on the field. But Steve Folsom was all by himself in the end zone and Chuck missed it. And you got a brawl now going on and down around the goal line. Finally, they get him separated. That's where the officials need a hard hat. Well, sometimes it's a little hard to break up those gang fights. Kelvin Bryant in the middle of it. Irv Eaton was over there earlier. There's a flag thrown. Look how wide open Folsom is here. He's wide open. He just was going the other way, tried to reverse his field. The ball's thrown too high. Folsom didn't have a chance, a real good chance to hang on to that one. Personal foul, number 56, Los Angeles. Personal foul, number 44, Philadelphia. Penalties cancel. Quarter is over. And the extra point try is missed, and it's 15-14 Philadelphia. We will continue after this message and a word from our local station. The world's leader is 35mm photography and the official 35mm camera of the 1984 Olympics. And by Dodge, official cars and trucks of the USFL. To the final quarter we go, a one-point ball game. Philadelphia missing both extra points. Tony Bodie, 24. Kevin Mack, 27. Deep people for Dave Trout's kickoff. In the end zone, it's Mack. Penalty flags have been thrown. And he's up across the 10 to the 11. Took his eye off the ball. Mark McCants runs him down. And let's see about the penalty. When that ball dropped, Keith, he was still in the end zone. He could have just grabbed it, kneeled down, and had the ball in the 20-yard line, depending on who this penalty is against. Somebody threw an arm. Somebody clotheslined somebody, according to the motion of the official, makes a personal foul. And it's against Los Angeles. So when it looked like they were rolling and had things going their way, Boom, bang, and now they're behind by a point, and the penalty will go half the distance back to about the six. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness on the return, number 55 on the kick return team. First down. Here's what it looks like. Right there, the clothesline, right up to the net. Jeff Rodenberger. Yep. 
Yeah, that's a pretty rough customer. He's big he enough. kept he, going. <laughs> he'd fight a sawmill to give him a chance. Young will throw out of the end zone. Passes away. Deep pattern downfield. Scott dropped the ball. Sutton is covering him. Scott had it right on the numbers. A perfectly thrown ball, and Fred Kent come down with it. There's only one thing that could happen that would be worse for a receiver than what you see here. And that's to have been in the end zone and to have dropped it. And oh, he may have been able that. to run into the end zone from where he dropped that ball. Whoa, that was when you needed the big play. Sutton didn't touch the ball. He did not touch the ball. Fred Scott had every opportunity to catch it. He was right there and it just went through his hand, his arm, down his chest, to the ground. Well, they tried to draw a play, and Mel Gray comes scooting out of there and gets it up to about, uh, what, the 17, and that's going to be a first down for Los Angeles, so get off the hook anyway. Let's check in for a moment with Mike Adamley. Keith, they say that lightning never strikes twice in the same place. In the case of the LA Express, the center position is struck three times. Mike Ruther is now playing, but he is playing in extreme plane. The backup center, Greg Loberg, they went to the locker room. He is having his left ankle x-rays for a possible break, plus Wayne Jones, the man who came in for Ruther when he was hurt, the left guard. He's got a pair of banged up ribs, so it looks bad at that position. It'll be a point to look at. And while you're talking, Fred Scott has the ball in his hands again and again doesn't hold it as this time Jonathan Sutton hit him and knocked it loose. So two big plays where Scott <laughs> could have picked up a ton of yards and twice the ball got away from him. Oh, Mike Allen said lightning usually doesn't strike twice in the same place. Well, here it did for Fred Scott. Same play, same situation. It's in his hands and he drops the ball. Sutton hits him. He's trying to pull his arms apart and is able to separate him from the ball. So when L.A. now has two opportunities to have gone a great distance down the field, they come away empty. Second down and 10. The ball is on the 17. This is Mel Gray, and Gray is out to the 19, and that'll do it. That gives him two yards. He's carried the ball 19 times, and he has broken into the history book insofar as the opposition against Philadelphia. He has now picked up 108 yards, and he's the first man ever to do it against the uh, Philly defense. Well, it won't mean very much to him if his team loses. Nope. Thirteen and a half minutes to play in the football game. 15-14, Philadelphia leads by a point. Out of the shotgun on third down and eight. Young's pass is away and incomplete. Intended for Townsell. And the penalty flag is down. And Philadelphia's Garcia Lane is going to get dinged for interference. Two flags thrown in the secondary. Garcia Lane called to pass interference earlier in the ball game. Number 89, Darren Long, was the intended receiver. It is against the Philadelphia Stars. And it's a first down Los Angeles out around the 38. Here's the play. Excuse me, that was JoJo Townsville, number 26, who was the intended receiver. So he comes across. We'll see if he's waiting for the pass. Yep. Pass interference. Defense. First down. Garcia Lane does make contact first. Put it the on the 34 defense. instead of the 38. That's where they mark it down. Well, let's see if he goes to Freddie Scott one more time. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Yep. And he can get still hasn't caught it. You think, you think Jonathan Sutton can figure it out by now? <laughs> Jonathan gets more involved in this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, this time, Freddie Scott doesn't get a clear shot of catching the ball. He's not in bad position here. If he turned around, he might have caught it. Well, he had a chance there. He, he right. He would have had a better chance if he could get turned around, but he was looking back over his shoulders. Jonathan Sutton figured it out enough, <laughs> so he didn't get beat that time. Second down and 10. Should go to Mel Gray. George Cooper had it thrown right in his hands. Pass intended for Townsell and Cooper, the outside linebacker. George had it right on his hands and couldn't hold it. Now we're sitting up here in this booth, Keith, and right next to us, to our right, we watched that play over again, and George Cooper having a chance. 
Sid Gilman, who's a special offensive co uh, assistant coach to John Needle, is up here, and I'll bet you he was calling those plays down. Look at this, New Orleans beating Michigan 10-3 in the fourth quarter. Mazzetti's 24-yard field goal. Boy, I tell you, that's a big win for New Orleans if the breakers can hang on. Out of the shotgun on third and ten, pressure on Young, got to get rid of it, does. Throws it in the crowd, and it's incomplete. Hersey was there. Hersey yelling for a call on Sam Mills. Doesn't get it. And again, so it was, it's fourth down. Again, it was Mike Lush, number 27, who was putting the pressure on Steve Young. And he again came right through the middle of the offensive line of the LA Express. As if there weren't enough problems, they couldn't stop that blitz coming up the middle. Now, they've, lost, they've, got, three, they've got a center who is hurt and not as mobile playing that spot. They need a big punt out of Partridge right here. Let's see if he rises to the occasion. He hasn't given him one yet today. Yes, he does. Goody runs Lane back to his 15, 14, 13, ducks away and comes back to the 20 in for a moment. I thought he was gonna come flying out of there. There's a penalty flag. 52 yard punt by Partridge that time. Steve Young had thrown eight straight completions. But, and the penalty's against Los Angeles. Can you believe it? Now he's thrown six straight incompletes, but not all of them his fault. That's true. Yeah, they were downfield, downfield. They had an ineligible downfield, Los Angeles did, so the penalty's against them, and I would think Philadelphia would want them to do it again. Well, Jeff Partridge, again, as he has not been that consistent in his continuous ball game. They haven't been very far, 26, 36, and 26 yards. That one was his best punt, 52 yards. And the odds are he won't come close to that one this time. Well, Mama. Illegal player of the kicking team, downfield, before the kick, number 56. Think a long time before you let your son grow up to be a football coach. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like... Uh, <laughs> A little license with a Willie Nelson song. Boy. Carries you up to see things like this. It does. Lush gives him a big rush. Didn't make contact. Still a pretty good kick. As Garcia Lane comes back up field with it. About eight yards. And uh, Philadelphia, we've got another flag thrown. That was a 40-yard punt. And they give him an 11-yard return. And a Los Angeles man is shaken, and the, they pick up the flag and put it back in the pocket. An L.A. man is hurt downfield. You've got a timeout with 12.39 to play in the ball game. Imagine designing a telephone system for a city that doesn't exist yet. Someplace growing with more people talking, more data and video transmission. How can any phone company keep up with ITT System 12? an extraordinary digital system that expands easily and economically as a small town becomes a big city. ITT System 12 is designed to meet needs that don't even exist yet. Miles didn't kill these trucks. They died of exposure. We are trucks, and this is how we with more rust-fighting galvanized steel than any top-selling full-size pickup. And America's longest, no-extra-cost, factory rust-through protection truck warranty. Five years or 100,000 miles on all 84 full-size pickups and Ram chargers. We are done. Now get $500 cash back on all 250 and 350 pickups. Hi, I'm Lee Iacocca. My parents, and maybe yours, were among the millions who passed through Ellis Island on their way to a better life. Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty offered the promise of freedom. They are symbols of what this country stands for. But now, they need our help. The USFL is making a donation for every ticket they sell to help restore this beloved national monument. It's a generous start, but we need your help, too. Won't you contribute to this noble cause? Thank you. Arizona Wranglers getting out to a 3-0 lead over the Oakland Inverter Invaders in the first quarter. The hurt player for Los Angeles is John Truitt out of Oklahoma, a linebacker being helped off the field, leg, either ankle or knee. Noting that Arizona lead over Oakland. Oakland, of course, won two in a row. Arizona coming into this weekend's play tied with Los Angeles at five and six. Houston won last night big. 
And uh, you've got to keep remembering that the two best records other than the division winners will come into the playoffs as wild cards. And Los Angeles right now has got its eye on that. So does Arizona. And those two teams will have to, they play twice more, including the end of the season. So it's a big day for both L.A. and Arizona. It's first down Philadelphia from the 41. And this is Kelvin Bryant up to about the 47. In the way of mistakes today in the ball game, Los Angeles is at eight penalties, four sacks, one interception, and missed two field goals. Philadelphia, nine penalties, three sacks, and been intercepted one time. That's enough mistakes to last a month. Both interceptions have led to touchdowns for the team that did the picking off. Bryant again. Bingo for the L.A. defense at the 45. Short of the line of scrimmage, lost a couple of yards. Fletcher Jenkins and Wyman Henderson. He had Kelvin Bryant downfield knocking people around, but he just couldn't get down there. Kelvin Bryant has had a tough going all day today. Harvin trying to get a block from the outside. Folsom trying to block for him, but their men are there to make the plays. He's had 13 carries now for only 21 yards. Well, they lose a yard on that play. Bryant is out. Harvin is in. It's third down and five. You see this pass? Just enough for the first down to Willie Collier. Willie spins away and goes to the Los Angeles 45. Philadelphia leading in the football game, 15 to 14, with 11:05 to play in the game. Well, we haven't seen a lot of Willie Collier today. He made one big catch, corner route that set up the score. We see him again on the clutch third down play. Makes a good spin move coming across the middle. Nursing a, a slightly pulled stomach muscle. 44-yard line of Los Angeles is where they put it down. First down for Philadelphia. This is Harvin looking for some place to go. <laughs> some place to hide. And it's straight down. Danny Rich, the first man to get there, he loses a yard. Ooh, there was no place for Harvin to even think about running. He got his small but very well-built frame to the outside, was looking for any kind of space to open up, and he had none, so he just tucked it in behind that line so he wouldn't lose any more than the one yard. You know who may turn out to play a well of a role in this ball game is Dave Trout. In the backfield, this is Bryant, big hole, and a first down at the Los Angeles 31. Aaron Mitchell, number 34, in on the tackle with number 33, Dwight Drain. Kelvin Bryant, this time, a low counter play. Riley's blocking to the right, he stepped to the right, then cut right back to the left side. After having the entire defense just shift enough towards their strong side of that team, the right side. And it's the first first down of the day running for Philadelphia. You see the back on first down going deep. Collier is there. Overthrown. Overthrown, but a great move. He put on Tyrone just in number 20. He had him turn the completely around. It looked like a little hook and go move. Just stutter step. Then he went by him. He has a stomach muscle. When you have a full stomach muscle, it's very hard to get your knees up because that's when your stomach muscle is being tested. That's John Truitt. He has a knee injury. There's a little ace. There's a big ace bandage wrapped around that knee. He will not come back in the ball game. Now looking at it, it may be some time before John's back. Second down and ten. Cena dumps it off. David Riley on a screen. Ooh. And he's got eight or nine yards. He was going down in the screen. I couldn't see who hit him, but I could hear it up here in the booth. That Number 33, drained. Dwight Drain. The man that came in and laid the lick on him as he was just as he was going down. We'll watch it. Good execution of the screen. They let the defensive line come through. 
Andrade gets to the outside, picks it off. He should hold it with two hands. He's going down, and right there, Dwayne just got a shoulder right under that helmet. They had Troy West, number 47, up along the line of scrimmage. He was trying to blitz, but he couldn't find an opening. They just absolutely picked him off and slammed the door on him. You've seen it now, 12 out of 20, 162 yards, intercept. Young, 12 out of 20, 134 yards, an intercept. This is Kelvin Bryant for the first down. Inside the 20 to the 18, Henderson brought him down. Kelvin's been kind of fierce ever since he got in that fist fight a while ago, hasn't he? Yeah, he got him around a little bit. This time he runs right between Chuck Comiskey, 69, and Irv Eatman and Steve Folsom all up there on the line. Watch him just make this little move to the outside right there. Instead of being able to get two legs, Wyman Henderson can only get one. He has to wait for the Calvary to bring Kelvin Bryant down. Number 34, Aaron Mitchell. First down, Stars, Express 18. Philadelphia, pounding down the field. 7.50 to play in a ball game. This is Alan Harvin, dropped at the 19 for a loss. Howard Carson, linebacker. Middle linebacker, the man who had the play, stepped into the hole. an impressive and a very timely drive on the part of the Philadelphia Stars. Yeah, it looks like they just cinched up the chin strap. Yeah, it? we did. <laughs> Irv Eatman. You know, he talked to Irv on the sideline during the ball game. And the man had such confidence. He sat there and told us, well, we're making some mistakes. We won't worry about it. We'll put it together when we have to. Right now, they're doing just that. Fiusina calls timeout. Pacina does not want to waste this opportunity. With 7.13 to go in the ball game, he'd like a bigger lead. We'll see if he gets it. Come on, move it, Cat. One more. When I work out, I love to sweat. Okay. It's how I get the edge. But afterwards, I want to feel dry. So Speed Stick Antiperspirant gives me an edge, too. Speed Stick's the wide stick. It goes on dry for man-sized protection in just a few strokes. Whatever game you're in, Get the edge. Let the wide stick give you the edge. Speed stick, super dry antiperspirant. By Madden. It's that time again. Time to double up on the king of beers. Summer fun calls for plenty of ice cold bud. Pick a pair and look for this special offer on a pair of Budweiser Olympic Steins, insulated to keep your bud cold. So double up on six packs, 12 packs, even cases. And don't forget to send for your Bud Olympic Stein. This bud's for you. He came from gate number 15 and had the speed to outrun the field. Now, Kentucky Derby winner Swale makes his attempt to capture the middle jewel in racing's triple crown. The Preakness Stakes, live Saturday. Both teams now with two timeouts remaining. 7-13 to play in the ball game. Philadelphia 15, Los Angeles 14. Second down, 11 Philadelphia at the Los Angeles 19-yard line. Into the throw. And they drag him down about the line of scrimmage. He was trying to squirt out of there. He was looking for Folsom, it appeared, but George Ochica got a hold of him and then got some help from Charles Ussery and Danny Wynn. Looking for Folsom, number 34, Aaron Mitchell was the man who was covering on that play. You see again the pressure. Eddie Weaver coming in from the outside, forcing him up the middle. George Ochica coming over, number 75. Number 70 now, Ch Charles Ussery coming over, making the stop. Number 75, Jorga Chica, now comes out of the ball game. It's an audible. You're seeing it at Riley, one-on-one. -on -one. He won't get his first down. Troy West comes in a hurry and gets him at the 19. What? And here, I think, comes Mr. Dave Trout. Ever since Kelvin Bryant staked Troy West out of his socks early in the ball game, Troy West has come on to play very, very well. He was a man to pick that pass off and returned it 26 yards to set up the LA Express touchdown. But now the man of the hour, number one, David Trout. With 5.55 and the clock running to play in the ball game, a successful field goal from 36 yards will make it 18-14, a four-point lead 
pretty big the way these two defensive teams have slugged it out today. He's got it. For Dave Proud, who kicked five field goals last week, hits a big one here. 18-14 stars with 537 to play. Gives Philadelphia a four-point lead. Mack at the three. That's Bodie. Bodie. 24. Bodie. And he does not get his season average on the kickoff return as he comes out to the 18. Well, he got turned around by Herbert Harrison there on that return. He was off balance. And just fell about four yards to the 18-yard line. Well, it's put-up time for the Express, isn't it? Yes, it is. 5.22 and counting. Both teams with two timeouts remaining. Dwayne Gunn, one of the wide people. From the 18, Young to throw. Pressure on, steps away. Starts to run, caught from behind at the 10. John Bunning blitz, missed him, stayed in the hunt, and got him. The fifth sack of Young. Well, Steve Young, after John Bunting missed, stepped up into the pocket. Number 91, Buddy Moore, was right in his line. He couldn't go anywhere. You see, Moore, number 91, right there. Number 72, Jeff Hart's doing the blocking on him. He keeps him away. Then Bunning comes back and makes the tackle. Give the Philadelphia secondary credit. They shut off the receivers. Here goes Mel Gray on a draw play, and Gray runs up across the 20 to the 24, where they'll be looking at third down and four. Well, that's what they were doing the last time they had possession of the ball. They try one to Scott. He would have some difficulties. They come back to... To Mel Gray, he'd pick up some big yards. Once it was a first down, second time he set up another first down. This time, after being sacked, he takes the ball, gets a big gain. Now it's third down and five. They stop it. They have a blitz coming from a long way away. Be at number 27, Mike Lush, the safety. Someone on offense may have moved. Ball start. Number 56, offense. Gary Zimmerman, the left tackle. So instead of third and four, now it's third and nine. It's a difference. Big difference. Except for one thing. I think without a doubt, it's going to be a blitz. Just a matter of who. is completed after Mel Gray and Gray is caught and brought down around the 27 by Sam Mill and he is short of his first down by a couple of yards and Mel Gray is limping after that tackle that was short what do you got in time now you got 351 350 clock running you got two timeouts you trail by four I guess the kick is the smart thing here yeah well you trail by four I wouldn't kick the football I'd go for it but then again, I'll never be a coach. <laughs> and when you all want to be a coach, you have to worry about those little decisions. Good spin on the ball. Runs Lane back to the 22. Retreats to the 21. Turns up field and caught. By Henderson coming down. Wyman Henderson brings him down on the 26. It was a 50-yard punt by Parker. So he set two big ones when they had to have it. 319 to play. Kelvin Bryant. Big hole for him. And Kelvin runs it out to about the 34. Great yard. You know, Irv Eatman came out and he said that the LA Express were overplaying some of their favorite plays, stacking it up against it, and they just had some problems blocking it. Now it seems like they're just going away from what their tendencies are, giving them the look of 
what might be their normal play, going to the right side, then countering, coming back to the left side. Been running a left-handed. Yeah, catching that team, catching the LA Express defense over shifted and making some big yards. Achika has to come out, limping a little. Forte goes in, number 71, rookie. There's Black trying to go the other way. And number uh, 53, Danny Rich, hit him first. Didn't get him down, but he slowed him down and stopped him short. And they call a timeout, trying That's to save some down. of that time. Bryant goes off the field, sort of holding his leg a little bit. It'll be third and four now, as Bryant lost about a yard and a half. See Rich, number 53, pop in there. He slows him down and then got some help from his pal. And Bryant's not happy. He's sitting over on the bench, took his helmet off, Excuse me. And is really unhappy. I don't know if he's unhappy about his performance or if he's unhappy about the hit he just took. ABC News, World News Tonight, Sunday with Sam Donaldson. We'll have a look at the blood problems the folks out in the Salt Lake City, Utah area are facing. Nick Schaap will report on the U.S. Women's Olympic track team. Joan Benoit won the marathon yesterday up in Olympia, Washington. And she did it for what, just, what, 17 days or something like that after having had arthroscopic knee surgery. She is a tough little lady. That, that she is. Heck, she could have been the healthiest woman in the world, and I think she was tough if she could run 26 <laughs> miles. But she holds a world record. Yeah, forget, forget the 300-plus change <laughs> that they tack on the end of it in yards. Mel Gray has set a new Los Angeles rushing record in the ball game today. He's run 20 times for 122 yards and a touchdown. So the rookie out of Purdue, the ball maker at 175 pounds, has played bigger than that today. It's Philadelphia's ball, third down and four at their own 32-yard line. She saw and that time is 2.13 remaining. That stat earlier, Chuck Fusina just over 50%. And his third down efficiency rate. This is where I'd lay my ears back on defense, wouldn't you? They do. He gets it away quickly. And Willie Collier is screaming that Dwight Green pushed him down. But no flag. He's screaming. He was on his knees. Fusina number 14 came up, and Fusina will always fight for his receiver. All right, there's the one bump. <laughs> bump? That's not a chuck, is it? <laughs> well, I or think he it? was in the five-yard zone, but the ball was in the air, so it would be pass interference. Landetta, sky high to Gunn at the 20. Gunn comes back to the 27. A 48-yard punt by Sean Landetta. And there are two flags down on the field. At the 40, not, at the 39-yard line and at the 38-yard line. And where Herbert Harris has his arms wide open. Looks like it's against Philadelphia. Earl Sorgan, the referee. 12 players participating for the defense. Penalty refused. 26 defense, first down. Oh, boy, can you believe it? <laughs> the Los Angeles Express trying very hard to self-destruct in the late going of the ball game. Jojo Townsell number, Townsell, number 26, is a man called for holding. So you've got the timeout at a minute 59 to play in the football game. It's Philadelphia 18, Los Angeles 14. Denerex shampoo and conditioner versus head and shoulders. Regular Tampa Bay next Sunday. We'll have that game for you in some areas of the country. But right now the Los Angeles Express are hit with another flag and Philadelphia gets the first down. At their 37-yard line, 159 to play. L.A. with two timeouts, or one timeout remaining, and they're going to have to probably spend it to stop the clock. Give the ball to Kelvin Bryant, and Bryant is caught. He'll get two yards on the carry. Danny Rich locked his leg. L.A. 
play calls for another timeout, and I believe that's her, their last timeout in the ballgame. Yeah, that's one. They got zero. Right there, the stat says one, but that's wrong. It's wrong. There's there are no timeouts left. We'll put it on Dave Burns. He says there are none left. <laughs> the Pro Bowler Spring Tour next Saturday, season premiere out of Seattle, Washington. One hundred and fifteen thousand dollar open. Top people in bowling bowing in from. The great Northwest, Chris Schenkel and Nelson Burton Jr. The Preakness Stakes live from Baltimore, Maryland. It'll be long at 5 Eastern, 4 Central, and 2 Pacific. Kentucky Derby winner Swale going for the middle jewel in racing's Triple Crown. The 109th running of the Preakness from Pimlico in Baltimore, live. And the ball is sitting on the... 39-yard line of Philadelphia. Second down and eight for the Stars. Leading by four points with a minute and 52 to play. Bryant. And Kelvin Bryant is brought down short of the first down by Wyman Henderson. He didn't get all of it, but he got enough. So it'll be third down and close to three yards. Well, it's obvious if L.A. is going to have a chance to get a touchdown, which they need to go ahead in this ball game, they're going to have to get a fumble or a turnover at some point in the next play or two. We welcome those who have been watching Michigan New Orleans here in Philadelphia. The Stars lead the Express of Los Angeles 18 to 14. A minute and 10 to play in the ball game. Kelvin Bryant trying to get a first down. And the fire, the last surge, got it for him. So Bryant stretching out in the grass of Howard Carson gets the big first down. Now 105 to play in this football game. And we have had a big fist fight all day here in Philadelphia. The two defensive units of these two teams have really battled each other. There have been a zillion mistakes. There have been penalty flags flying all over the field all day. Los Angeles at one time had a chance to seemingly put the ball game away. And then boom, Steve Young throws an interception. Garcia Lane picked it off and Philadelphia scored. Dave Trott's field goal from 36 yards made it a four-point lead. And now with no timeouts remaining, Chuck Fusina just takes the snap and sits down. So it would appear that uh, Philadelphia has run its record to 11 and 1 in 12 weeks. Los Angeles will drop to 5 and 7. Arizona was out to an early lead over Oakland in a game being played in the Pacific Division. And uh, the circumstances are getting tighter and tighter insofar as wild card assignments are concerned for the upcoming playoffs at the end of the season. That's the last snap of this football game. And Jim Mora, scared to death of this Los Angeles team, fearing his club might let down a little bit. I think perhaps they did let down some, but when they had to do it, they did do it. And they beat the Los Angeles Express by a score of 18 to 14 in Philadelphia before a Mother's Day crowd of 22,391.